The problem about Africa is it's 55 different countries, and in fact, the way we do our projections on the map, in fact, we don't understand geographically just how big it is. You could get all of Europe, all of North America, all of China and India into Africa and still have some room to spare. So it's a huge country and these 55 countries from north to south are very, very diverse. So obviously some are going to do much better than others, just like some countries in Europe are obviously doing better than others. But I think that one of the things that will be very interesting to watch will be this year's G20, uh, the summit of the 20 most powerful and wealthy nations on earth, convening in China uh, in August this year. Now, the one African state that will be there will be South Africa. It has a seat as of right in the G20. And the African Union will attend as an observer delegation. I think the Chinese intend to unveil a vast economic plan for their future outreach to the world, not just Africa, but how the Chinese plans affect almost everybody in the globe today. It would be very interesting to see the African response. Now, when I was in South Africa at the end of last year, uh, policy planning for how to deal with possible Chinese scenarios at the G20 hadn't even started. So whether or not the South Africans go with a proper brief as to how to exploit the Chinese plans, or whether or not President Zuma and his delegation will just go for a joyride, there's lots of shopping in the city where this is going to be held. It's basically a gigantic holiday resort. Whether they'll go for pleasure or whether or not they'll go for serious government business, that is always the hallmark, I think, of African governments when they go abroad. What kind of business do they do? But in particular, what level of business do they do? Amazingly, for all of its corrupt past, the Nigerians are getting really good at this. Uh, and again, amazingly, and I think we don't really catch up on this because the language is Portuguese, the Angolans have gotten really good at negotiating with the Chinese and with the Lusophonic community, which includes, of course, powerful nations like Brazil. So in different countries, there are different experiences. In many countries, of course, you've still got the threat of war, civil strife, genocide, gendercide, starvation. Uh, there are huge, as it were, black marks in Africa. The conflict in Democratic Republic of Congo in the eastern part has probably claimed more than two million lives and the world doesn't care. Uh, it's not visible, it's inaccessible, there's no oil there. Uh, so it's become a forgotten conflict which rages on and on and it's to do with the power struggles in the region. It's a bit like the never-ending Balkan Wars in Europe, only they came to an end. In that part of Africa, that war has not yet come to an end. So there are still major, major difficulties that Africa has got to overcome. I think a lot will depend again on the future of the African Union. It wants to be like the European Union of Africa. It has a whole new generation of young technocratic civil servants, some of whom are really impressed when you go to their headquarters at Addis Ababa in Ethiopia and you meet and work with some of these young people, they're just as good as the brightest young Wunderkin civil servants in Europe. But their leadership, the older generation, is not always as good. The future of Africa really does depend on a generation change. A lot of these old men should really get out of the place. It's used very much as a political sort of horse these days. It gets kicked around a bit, a bit like the European Union. The politics about African Union remind me very much of some of the debates in Great Britain, for instance. But I think that there is a very growing sense, again within the younger educated generation, once again for the kind of pan-Africanism, this idealism that grew up around the independence period, leaders such as Kwame Nkrumah, spoke about a pan-Africanism, you know, getting the continent to get its act together in a far more unified way. That kind of idealism is starting to surface again within the, the younger generation. So again, whether it's in individual countries or whether it's going to be in terms of the African Union, it is going to depend very much on a generation jump. Mm -hmm.